hello students in the last class we have discussed about the uh, modes of arm modes for the cortex a and uh, uh, r profile which uh, which we have uh, of which we have seven different modes uh, and we have discussed about that and also the modes of uh, uh, cortex m also and you know about a r m m m is for your microcontroller profile and a is r is for your real time profile a is for your high efficiency application profiles so and uh, and later we just come across what are all the registers that we are uh, that uh, we are, we are going to use in the different modes of uh, cortex a and r and uh, the uh, uh, register uh, bank set for your uh, cortex m in this class we are going to discuss the program status registers of uh, cortex a and r and later the program status registers of your cortex m okay so the program status registers of cortex a and r it is uh, uh, you have two types of program status register one is your current program status register and uh, spsr is said to be the saved program status register okay current program status register and the saved program status register both of the registers are having the same format are having the same format and cpsr holds processor status and control information okay whereas the purpose of spsr is to record the pre exception value of your cpsr and on taking the exception the cpsr is copied to the spsr of the mode to which the exception exception is taken this we will discuss okay so as of now you remember Uh, CPSR and SPSR has both has same formats. Okay, when you have an exception, when you have an exception, uh, you have to serve that exception, right? You have to go and attend that exception. So before going to that exception, whatever the current status of the program, the main program, that will be saved in your SPSR, and the current program counter value will be saved in the linker register. When the in the linker register. and then uh, uh, the uh, program control will be transferred to the exception once after handling that exception it has to return back to the main program while, while it is returning back to the main program the cpsr will copy the content from the spsr and the uh, program counter will copy the content from the linker register and the normal modes will be done okay the exceptions we have different modes of exceptions uh, exception modes uh, so accordingly the mode bits will be copied into your uh, um, cpsr register okay i'll uh, tell you more in detail in the forthcoming slides so now as of now both cpsr and spsr has uh, the same format see it's a 32 bit register it's a 32 bit register from 0 to 4 it is used for uh, um, handling your modes uh, you have seven different modes right so you need to tell the arm go that uh, which in which uh, mode that we are going to operate so it uh, it represents your modes 0 to 4 represents your modes that is your mode bits and p represents the thumb state you can uh, you can have uh, the micro pro i mean arm controller or arm processor uh, that is you can operate it in the thumb mode and the arm instruction mode and the reason processor also has the jessel mode which will execute the java uh, java uh, code okay which will execute the java code so t represents your uh, thumb uh, mode okay thumb state bit and uh, fiq irq uh, is your uh, type of uh, encrypts that I, we will discuss in the next slides and this is your bot and this will be your data ndms and uh, your uh, control bits the most significant bits of your program status register represents your control bits which otherwise i can say that it will represent your ale condition codes which are nothing but your uh, negative less than zero carry and your overflow and your overflow and optionally these bits are set by the data processing instructions these bits are set by the pro data processing instructions and they are tested by conditional uh, instructions for example you have done in your nt51 right whether your carry flag is set jump to this in that case uh, so uh, uh, those conditional instructions so it will test these uh, 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 these bits okay status bits and uh, coming to your uh, 
and then now uh, what is this dnm bits so dnm bits is nothing but uh, do not modify do not modify you should not modify in the test uh, in bracket we have written it as they have written it as raz raz is read as 0 see read as 0 okay so that is your dnm bit i'll uh, discuss about this uh, dnm bit shortly and as of now we will go ahead with the ge bits okay uh, ge bits you have four additional ge bits and it is used for storing the code or the multiple results. This GE bits will be used for storing the code or the multiple results from SIM SIMD instructions. SIM D instructions and those uh, ALU state status bits uh, are the only ones we can modify when operated in user mode. So these ALU status bits are the only one we can modify when we are in user mode. Okay, user mode. And uh, the bottom 5 bits I have discussed already. This represents the mode bits. And uh, the current, uh, this uh, um, bottom 5 bits uh, incurred or incorporated the, incorporate the current processor mode. It will tell us in which processor mode that the ARM code is operating with. This will be set automatically when the mode change occurs in response to an exception. And we can also modify this manually in privileged mode. So that we can change mode under program control. Okay. And come to your uh, the J and the T bits. See uh, 24 and 5. Okay. So these are said to be the state bit in which state your ARM code is in. Either it is in thumb mode or in jassel mode or in your ARM mode. So two other status bit J and T bit tell the current state of the processor and this tells us which instruction set is the code is currently executing. Either it is in ARM state or it is in thumb state or it, or it is in JASL. In many of the course executes, recent course execute your JASL byte code also. These bits are never modified directly. Okay, these bits J and T is never modified directly and we look how to change these bits one, only when we cover those into the business of working. And what about your I and F? I said I'll discuss this. Okay, I and F we can enable or disable for your interrelated IRQ and FRQ interrupts. And A is the asynchronous data bit. A is the asynchronous data bit to be temporarily suppressed. To be temporarily suppressed. And E allows NDNS, that is the NDNS bit of the data interface to be changed dynamically under software control and making it very easy to deal with the next end data. Okay. And the remaining bits, the remaining bits in the sense your do not modify bits. As of now, do not modify bits, DNM. The remaining bits, it is used for internal system state and we should not modify those bits in the given program, in the given program. Okay, so GE bits I already said these are used to store the code and the multiple results and the multiple results from the SIMD instructions. Okay, so we will discuss further about this program status register of Cortex A and R. So mode bits 0 from the first 5 bits from M0, M1, M2, M3 and M4. See, uh, it, is take, it is taking different values for different modes. So, for example, 1, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0 is your user mode. It tells the uh, pro current processor mode. It tells the pro current processor mode. And two types of interrupts, I said I and F. Uh, and it can take the values of 0, 1. 1 means uh, disable, 0 means enable. Okay. 1 means disable the interrupt, 0 means enable the interrupt. And the overflow flag, carry flag, zero flag and your uh, negative or signed uh, less than flag. Uh, this we will deal while we are doing the program. Okay. Mm -hmm. So next one is the, uh, we will uh, uh, say here uh, the CPSR and the SPSR bit assignment. Already I said the negative, zero, carry and overflow flags. And Q is the saturation bit. And uh, if and then uh, IT bit, okay, if and then bit executes the state bits of thumb, if and uh, then instruction. J is your jassel mode, three, T is your thumb mode, G is your greater than or equal bits. The same thing I am discussing, okay, the same thing I am discussing. 
and the e of your status register uh, e of your status register here i said uh, it uh, it represents the endianness endianness in the sense uh, mm, it represents endianness uh, zero for little indian and one for big indian i'll tell you asynchronous uh, about mask irq mask and fiq mask is f m is it to be your modified mod mode field and uh, that is your different modes i discussed in the previous slides okay so j bit execution state okay when j bit and t bit if it is 0 0 if it is 0 0 it is an arm mode and 0 1 thumb mode and 1 0 jessel mode and 1 1 thumb 2 mode thumb 2 mode is the old processor thumb instructions are 16 uh, bits whereas in recent processor the thumb instruction is of 32 bits okay thumb 2 ee so i will tell you what is that indianness okay uh, indian okay so you have big indian and little indian okay so for example if i am having a, a byte to be stored in the memory okay if i have byte that should be stored in the memory let it be uh, um, this byte 4f52 is the byte should be saved uh, it should be saved in memory this 4f52 okay so i, I said uh, each line of memory will occupy only 8 bits uh, if uh, if uh, first if i am uh, if i am saving the first uh, uh thing i'm saving the higher order and then if i'm saving the lower order this represents the big indian format okay say for example this is 1000 in 1001 52 will be stored in other way little indian is nothing but if 52 is stored first and later 4f it is stored that is said to be little indian the way in which you are going to save the data Okay, uh, we save the data. That represents your E bit. That is what I am saying about your E bit Indianness. Okay, uh, I repeat once. See, this represents your status flag. Do not modify bits. Uh, we are not going to modify anyway. And G bit is your. Uh, uh, it it will show used for additional bits uh, that is used to store the code and the multiple results. And M four it is used for representing the seven modes of operation. T represents your thumb. Uh, j and t we have uh, these two j and t bits uh, uh, j and t bits will represent four bit combinations that is what we have discussed uh. so j and t will have 0 0 0 and 1 and 1 1 so these uh, four bits we are have these four bits we have and then uh, uh, your uh, uh, f represents f and i represents your entry reps and uh, a represents your robot state this indianness only i have discussed in which way you are going to save the data in the memory and either it is little indian or the big indian okay this is about the program status register of your uh, cortex r and d okay and next we'll go ahead with the program status register of your microcontroller profile okay cortex m okay cortex m okay so already we have discussed about the program status uh, register of cortex m in the last class uh, this is different from your cortex a and r uh, the program status register has uh, three different status register and uh, here uh, the program status register of cortex m it is said to be xpsr it is said to be xpsr this xpsr is divided into three case uh, one is application pro pro program status register number two is interrupt program status register number three is execution program status register okay see the application program status register will have the condition flags namely your negative zero carry overflow and uh, your qubit okay and your qubit uh, it is nothing but your uh, it is used for it is used as a saturation bit okay saturation uh, uh, bit otherwise this is your sticky overflow flag used by saturating instructions okay used by saturating instructions so that is your apsr application program status register and your ipsr is your interrupt program status register so interrupt means automatically you need to remember your exception so each interrupt will be having an exception number will be having an exception number keep that in mind and next one is your execution program status register you have uh, here in your cortex m will always be executed in your thumb mode will always be executed in your thumb mode so t you should not modify the t bit uh, 
and uh, we have uh, uh, two other bits uh, namely your ICI IT, ICI or IT okay that we will see. And coming uh, uh, put together all the three status registers have been combined and collectively represented as X, XPSR and it is used in uh, uh, program codes okay. So, see your XPSR will be having the status bits, ICIT bits and uh, T, uh, T bits is your thumb and your exception number, okay. Hmm? So, ICIT IT bits is, your, is uh, for your uh, SPSR for your version M I have represented here and uh, what is your EPSR, okay. EPSR, uh, uh, in the EPSR you have that IT or ICA, right? IT or ICA is nothing but if then, if then uh, uh, execution, okay? Holds the if then execution state bits for the thumb uh, IT instruction, if then, IT means if and then, okay? Instruction that applies to the IT block of, uh, block to one of the four instructions immediately followed by the if then instructions, okay? So, you have uh, IT 5 to 7 and the IT, these are the bits 0 to 4, uh, 0 to 4 and uh, 7 to uh, 5 to 7 holds the base condition of the current IT block and uh, four, 0 to 4 it will be encoded and this is the explanation for that uh, and uh, we will see this more about in detail in the, uh, while you are dealing with the particular ARM code. Okay, as of now you remember your XPSR status register of your Cortex M has three components. One is your uh, EPSR, APSR and your uh, IPSR, okay. So, the earlier version of your M, um, uh, M. so I said already you have only two modes, uh, thread mode and the handler mode in your ARM M, ARM M when the earlier mode uh, will be having uh, this uh, register the control register in that you have uh, uh, SPSL bits that will represent your selection bits if it is 0 means SPSL bit is 0 means it is in red mode and if SPSL is 1 means it is in uh, handler mode okay. Hmm? I have represented the M3, M4 and the ARM6 processor. So, collectively this is the program status register. Collectively, this is the program status register uh, for uh, both your cortex uh, uh, A, R and M. Uh, the bottom one will, represents, uh, will represent your, uh, uh, your cortex A and uh, R and the top one will represent your ARM M profile, okay. Okay, so coming to the exceptions of cortex A and A, I am going on talking about the exceptions. What are all the exceptions that uh, oh, exception, exception when, how to handle exceptions. So, what is this exception? So, what happens actually when an exception occurs? In ARM architecture, when an exception is some kind of event, okay, exception is nothing but some kind of event and it is an interruption in the normal program. When, see here, this is your normal program flow, this is your normal program flow. When a, a exception occurs here, there is an interruption, it is an interruption to the normal program flow and the system deals with the interrupt called an exception here. So, these exceptions may be internal or external. If it is internal, it is a memory protection fault and if it is an external, it is related to a bus error, okay. And it may, a bus error means it uh, like uh, interrupts from peripherals, okay. And they may, uh, and these exceptions are also synchronous and asynchronous. Synchronous is uh, because of your SVC instruction and asynchronous is like a timer interrupt, is like a timer interrupt. Now, whatever may be the origin uh, of exceptions, all the exceptions are handled by the ARM core in the same way, okay. Huh? So, how we are going to handle, how we are going to handle once uh, this exception occurs, once this exception occurs and uh, uh, what happens? Your exception is uh, occurs. So, CPSR, current program status register will be moved to your program status, saved program status register and your program counter value will be moved to the linker register and then your CPSR will be copied to your, uh, will be, uh, this status will be changed according to the exception. And your program counter value will have 
the address of the exception or the interrupts okay address of exception okay and after executing all this after executing this exception because we need to return to the main program after executing this uh, uh, exception or uh, the interrupts we need to return to the main program once after completing the exception while we are returning it to the main program this uh, cpsr uh, spsr will be copied to cpsr and then linker register value will be copied to the program counter and your normal execution of the main program will be done okay this is how you will be handling your exceptions and uh, coming to your uh, i am telling when you have an exception uh, go to the exception handler exception handler will be nothing but a small program or uh, uh, subroutine program that will be returned for uh, handling your exceptions or interrupts right so uh, and uh, we will have those uh, uh, where to jump uh, after copying the cpsr and pc into your spsr and low linker register where to jump for the exception that will be given uh, according uh, to lead to the vector table uh, the type uh, uh, you have your type of exceptions see in 8051 also you have uh, uh, you have different types of interrupts internal interrupts external interrupts serial uh, uh, interrupts like that for each and every interrupt you had a vector table right similarly here also your exception handling for your cortex r and a it will be having depending upon the type of ex exception you have the subroutine program or your exceptional handler program that is written in the address that is being given for reset it is all zero and undefined instruction four software interrupt eight and abort c like that if this uh, each for between your exceptions you have only four lines of memory if these four lines of memory is not uh, sufficient if it is not sufficient for uh, writing the subroutine program of the exception we will write simply a jump instruction there and and after jumping uh, jump instruction there uh, whatever location that the, the jump instruction is pointing there you will be having the exception subroutine okay that this is uh, similar in all the microprocessor or microcontroller this process i'm telling about and coming to your exceptions in cortex m so how many different of uh, uh, different exceptions we have so shc and sr is nothing but system handler control and your status register these are the bits for your system handler control and the status registers as of now it's a 32 bit register you remember that and what are all the exceptions for your cortex m are you have ir2 type of exceptions for your interrupt sys check and svc call some of them i am telling bus fault memory management fault hardware fault are some of the exceptions here we have written in the vector table along with the address okay along with the address okay this is for your cortex yeah right after this and let's see this is uh, this is exceptions again i have uh, given one more slide uh, which is a priority user priority this is your priority level minus one minus two minus three and this is uh, same these exceptions are uh, same for m uh, m0 4 uh, 3 and m7 versions of your um, uh, cortex m okay these are the type uh, number of exceptions okay these are uh, this many number of exceptions we have this many number of exceptions we have okay and coming to the security uh, extensions okay so security exception ex extensions is otherwise that to be trust zones there are two extensions to the architecture a cortex a two extensions of the architecture cortex a coming to the security extension there are two extensions of architecture namely your normal world the first one is normal world and number two is your secure world these two exceptions these two extensions are for cortex a okay so and uh, uh, we support and the arm the arm support the arm will support for this uh, v7a course allows the implementation of secured platforms namely why these extensions these extensions are allowed for the implementation of secure platforms namely digital voice and digital payment solutions and what it does is it implements the two virtual machine running on the same piece of hardware 
one is said to be your normal world and another one is said to be the secured world and uh, through a set of secured attributes that are propagated right through the system on to the bus the system designer and the and and the creators secured peripherals and secured memory regions which are only accessible from the secured world the transition between your normal world and the secured world will be handled by the secured monitor program okay by the secured monitor program and access to the secured monitor program is very carefully controlled and it should be dealt with great care that there should not be any leakage of data across the boundary across the boundary between the secure and the normal one more extension added to the v7 architecture recently is your hype mode okay is your hype mode that is supported only for the latest course okay these latest course which the with the hype mode will support hardware virtualization solution and additional mode this mode is called as hype mode okay and this is said to be your virtualization hypervisor and hypervisor sit above the hardware above the hardware and underneath the, the guest operating system we can configure things like ex exceptions and hardware virtual events okay hardware virtual events or other system events to be trapped by the hypervisor and signal on to those guest operating system hypervisor is only allowed in normal mode okay it is allowed only in normal mode that allows the system architects to combine the hardware virtualization solution of the hypervisor mode to the trust zone solutions and their secured platforms so this is about your security extensions with this i'll stop today have a nice day